I'm going to go over the popcorn writing template. There's when you first start this, um, you're just going to fill out the basic information at the top with your information and then the purpose, which is just to find the percent water within popcorn. And then when you go down here, the procedure, um, I don't want anything fancy. I just want it to summarize what we did in four sentences or less um, and reference figure one. Say we heated the popcorn as in the, like the setup in figure one collected the data in data table one. So if you reference those two things, it'll make your procedure pretty quick and easy. For the data table, or the data analysis down here, um, once you type in your own data up above, the point of doing the data analysis is to explain or show um, how you got your um, data analysis down below. So the mass of the popcorn up above, the way that you got the mass of the popcorn was by taking the beaker plus the popcorn right up here and subtracting the weight of the beaker, which is right there. And whatever, in this case, I have fake data in there. So it's going to be 120 minus 100 and I wrote that down, gets you 20. But you're going to use your data. And then if you go through and explain how you do um, the mass of the popcorn that popped, the mass of water lost, and the percent water in popcorn, and the deviation from average. If you explain it in this area up here in the same format that I used, that's what I'm looking for. When you do this, right down the do the calculations um, there's up above each one of the columns there's some letters up there those kind of guide you on how to do the calculations if you go up to the top they also have letters so B minus A would be taking your data in column B 120 and subtracting your data in column A and that will get you your mass of the popcorn before. So each one of the top, right up on top here, shows you how to do the calculations. The one that kind of people don't know how to do very well is the um, deviation. So I'm going to plug in some mock data in here. Let's assume that these are the percentages that I got from doing the lab 12, 14, and 16 that means my average is 14. To get my deviation on trial 1, what I have to ask myself is how far away is 12 from 14? It's 2 away. How far for trial 2, how far is 14 away from 14? It's 0. And then the last trial, how far is 16 away from 14? Now notice all these are positive. Um, your deviation will always be positive get your average you add all those numbers up and divide by 3 and so you'll get 1.33 for your average deviation that's just an example you're going to use your data to calculate it writing the conclusion so what I recommend you do when you write the conclusion is you want to use these um, prompting paragraphs kind of as a guide Leave them there until you're, you're completely done with writing the conclusion. So the first sentence you just start typing is state the objectives of the lab. To determine um, the purpose of the lab was to determine the percent water in popcorn. Then in the second sentence it asks you um, report your findings. Well go up to your table and your findings are should be your average percent water which is right here whatever you got here with your deviation so in my case up here I had the example that my average was 14 percent and then my average deviation was 1.3 percent so I would say in my lab I found out that uh, the percent water was 14% with an average deviation of 1.3%. The third sentence, that should explain 
um, should use your average deviation to explain precision. What I've told people is that 3% is kind of my cutoff, but you can, without knowing that, you can go down to the data table, and if you just think that consistency is important, that means anybody with um, that's able to get the same values each time is going to have a low deviation. So the people that have low deviations, are I trust their data more. Now, also you'll notice that most of their data of the people that were consistent, and when I say consistent, that's because their average deviation was right around three or less. Um, if you averaged out all of these, you would get a pretty good idea of what the percent popcorn is, or percent water in popcorn. But if you notice, when you look at the other values that have higher deviations, their percent waters have a much bigger range. Once you get down here, you're getting into some unreasonable numbers where you have really high percent waters. This section here are the students that um, may have good data, but they didn't get their calculations checked off. So they might have a mathematical error somewhere. But from their initial data that they sent in, you can look at them and see whether you want to use them in your average calculation. All right, going back up to your the conclusion, the fourth sentence should explain whether you met your objective. Well, if you were relatively consistent, so your average deviation was under three, and your percent water was reasonable, meaning probably somewhere between 5% and 30%, then you probably met your objective. The fifth sentence show, should explain how your data shows you met or did not meet your objective. So if you compare your data and you say you want to explain what I just said is that I think this is reasonable because and then you use a reference to um, something that has a high water content, maybe people, um, and say that the popcorn seems to be um, less, has less water content because it's not as squishy. Now the second paragraph, um, you're going to analyze the errors. What are some things that happened in the lab or people might have done? Um, when you weigh these out, um, was it possible that oil escaped when you popped? Um, was it possible that, uh, that not all the steam escaped? How would that impact? So explain how each one of those might have impacted the lab. There was also some errors with when you weighed the unpopped popcorn. Um, think about what might have happened. Burnt popcorn. So think of anything that might have influenced your mass measurements that you took in the lab. Because in turn, that would then impact your calculations for the percent water. Also, if you were to do this again, how would you avoid these errors and suggest improvements that you would recommend? The third paragraph is kind of what I did just a little bit ago with marking up that page. Explain why you would om omit data, I mean not use it. So looking at this down here, the ones that I chose to omit are the ones that um, I felt like the deviation was so great that um, I couldn't trust their data. So the high deviations. And then also there's some with really high percent waters that I didn't trust. All of these people that I'm choosing to look at are the ones that have checked off their calculations. So I know they're doing their math correctly. And then um, right here, compare your results to the class using percent error. Percent error how you do that is you take your value, your percentage that you got, the average, minus the one that you calculate when you average out all of the data that you decided to use. So let's say I decide to average this yellow column here, and I'm going to, oh, sorry, over here, <laughs> because this is the average water. Um, I used the criteria to select these because they had low deviation but I actually want to average the percent water. So if I averaged those and then compared it to my results, so mine 
minus the class average and then um, the bars on the outside are taking the absolute value then I divide it by the class multiply by a hundred so let's say that um, I'm gonna put in some dummy data and say that uh, mine was 14.0 percent and the class data was 15.0 um, percent when I did the calculations subtract and then I'm gonna put it over 15.0 multiply by a hundred that's going to get me um, 1 over 15, um, which is about 6.6%, 6 .6%, I think. So my answer, I would say with a percent error of 6.6%, that's telling me how far off I am from the class data, which I'm considering to be the true data or accurate. Um, industry, when I looked it up, um, they said that they like their popcorn percent water to be somewhere between 12 to 14 percent. And it looks like this year that people got pretty close to that when you look at the people that had low deviation. And then sign, um, the last paragraph explain how um, the lab helped or assessed things like scientific measurements. When you use the mass scale, you went to one tenth of the minor scale. Significant figures, when you're doing calculations, you always report to the least precise measurement. We use the conservation of mass because when we popped the popcorn, it decreased in mass because we knew that the water was leaving. So we assumed any decrease in mass was due to the water leaving. Accuracy, because we're comparing it to the class value and precision because of the deviation we are looking at the deviation on our we calculated it to see how precise we were so use those words correctly in your conclusion and you will have a, a great conclusion